Fredo Santana, he is one of the faces of the early drill movement. And in this video, I'm going to show you why he was so respected and what his story is. This is Fredo Santana. Before we start, I just want to quickly mention our podcast where we have a new format discussing various topics. This week, it's about the East Coast versus West Coast. So check out that video linked below in the description and let us know who you think won the discussion. Now let's get into the video. Fredo Santana was born on July 4th, 1990 in Chicago. He grew up with his two brothers and his cousins were always around visiting. You all know his cousins, Tato and a certain Chief Keith. Fredo's father, like Fredo later himself, was always out on the streets. There's even a photo of Fredo in his father's arms, and in one hand his father is holding a gun. Fredo even used this picture for an album cover. Fredo and his brothers were all quite alike, as they all loved money and wanted to make money. For instance, Fredo saw on TV at a very young age how everyone wore brand clothes, always fresh, while he walked around in torn old clothes every day, and he thought, hey, I need to do that too, I want cool clothes. So, at just 11 years old, he started selling drugs in his neighborhood. This also led him to join a gang at a very young age, the Black Disciples. The Black Disciples are especially known for their war against the Gangster Disciples. More specifically, he joined Front Street, which is a Black Disciples set, and unlike what some American blocks claim, he's not from O Block. He was never part of O Block. He was just cool with it. He's actually from Front Street. He was first arrested at the age of 12 in 2002. Call my first case shit. I was only 12. His next arrest came just two years later for allegedly beating up a teacher, which landed him in juvenile detention and on probation for a while. However, this was not really a deterrent for the young Fredo Santana, as throughout his life or career he was arrested at least 12 times. There are at least 12 mugshots of him, though there could possibly be even more. And because Fredo was so focused on making money, he really didn't care about the war his guys, the Black Disciples, were fighting. Make no mistake, he wasn't someone to mess with, but he wasn't a King Von, going out every day with the intent to kill people. And one thing you must give Fredo credit for, he never glorified killing in his career. Sure, he was against his rivals, but he was very respectful, which wasn't common at that time. And that's also one of the reasons why even his rivals, the Gangster Disciples, had a lot of respect for him. Besides selling drugs, he also made money robbing people, often targeting Gangster Disciples. Rapper Lil Reese has shared that he, King Von and Fredo Santana used to steal bikes from their rivals together. Fredo got his first tattoo at 17, right between his eyebrows. At that time, it was not common to get face tattoos. Nowadays, it's almost normal for rappers to have face tattoos, thanks in part to the whole SoundCloud era. Back then, however, it was very rare, and at this point, Fredo Santana wasn't even rapping yet, which is why he made a very intimidating impression on many people. As mentioned before, Fredo Santana spent a lot of time in jail, and that was especially true between 2010 and 2011, just before the breakthrough of Lil Reese and Chief Keef. What many people don't know is that during this time, there were conflicts between some individuals from Front Street and some from 600. For those who don't know, 600 is one of the most famous sets in Chicago, also Black Disciples. This means Front Street and 600 are actually allies. When Fredo came out of jail, he said something to some 600 members. He tells us, man, he say, look, I'm home now. Ain't no more of that 600 shit. That shit over with. And exactly that intensified the tensions between the otherwise friendly sets. And that evening, things got really heated with a shooting incident. A certain Odie Perry shot at 600 members, like Tay 600, for example. Fortunately, no one was seriously injured. And because of that, the beef was settled the next day, as they are actually allies. At this time, a certain Chief Keef also started releasing music. And along with him, many others did too, like Fredo, Lil Reese, SD, Capo, and they were all part of a rap collective called Glory Boys or Glow Gang. And the idea for this name came from Fredo Santana. The big breakthrough came early in 2012 for Lil Reese and Chief Keef with the drill anthem Don't Like, where the following legendary line was. 
Suddenly, the mainstream wanted to know who this Fredo was that Lil Reese rapped about. But do you know the backstory of that line? It was only recently confirmed by many independent witnesses from that drill era. Let me quickly summarize the story for you. In 2010, Fredo was in Chicago with two other drill legends, specifically in a territory usually occupied by the gangster disciples, likely referring to Lil Reese and Chief Keith, though people hinted at it subtly. At one point, gangster disciples like FYBJ Main and FBG Butter walked by, and Fredo emerged from his hiding spot, his cut, which greatly frightened the GDs. I don't know if a shooting occurred or how it all ended. Regardless, it's a legendary story that is still told to this day. Apparently, the line, Fredo in the cut, it's a scary sight, comes from this story, which definitely makes sense. And because of this line, as I mentioned, interest in Fredo incredibly increased and his music started getting more and more clicks. This way, Fredo built his own fan base independently from Chief Keef. Today, he is also seen as one of the co-founders of the drill movement. I, uh, somebody was trying to link up with him and I was telling him like, yeah, you cool this year. Cause, cause people go off names and they like, is, is he gonna be mean to me? Is he gonna? And I'm telling him like, nah, you cool this year? You down to earth? Like, he one person I know that ain't never been fooled. Ain't of them sneak this and none of that shit, so. He was growing bigger and bigger and had now made his mark in the rap game. And here, he was not to be trifled with. For instance, he threatened Migos and 21 Savage with death. Migos had an altercation with Chief Keef and the entire GBE, which I will cover in a separate video. And 21 Savage DC'd Fredo Santana out of nowhere. Hence the murder threats from Fredo. His first album was released in 2012. After that, at least one project came out almost every year. Musically, Fredo Santana was mainly inspired by 50 Cent and his single Heat. He referred to this single as true drill music. Another artist who inspired him was Gucci Mane. Thanks to the early drill hype, he made good money from music, which he shared with his neighborhood. He invited people over to his house, gave them drugs, took them to performances and to other cities, and even flew them to Los Angeles. He wanted to show his guys from the old neighborhood days that there's much more to life than just hood life. This made Fredo incredibly popular within his gang. Moreover, he always stayed out of internal gang conflicts. For instance, he had nothing to do with the beef between Chief Keef and O Block. He was also always cool with Lil Durk, despite the frequent disputes with his cousin Chief Keef. This made him the guy who was incredibly respected and esteemed. Unlike Chief Keef, he also decided against signing a label deal because he wanted to remain independent, so he founded his own label, Savage Squad Records, and the name truly speaks for itself. He signed people who were actual killers, like D-Rose and C-Day, who are members of 600 and are currently serving time for murders. But Fredo was also known for something else. He was known for his heavy use of drugs, especially codeine and Xanax. These were part of his daily routine for years, and this constant use ultimately took its toll on his body. He managed to get off these drugs in 2017, which was unfortunately too late. Even though he was clean, he ended up in the hospital due to organ failure. He survived, was released, but passed away two months later. He was found dead by his wife on January 19th, 2018, at just 27 years old. He died of a stroke and left behind an eight-month-old son. Another tragic death in the hip-hop community. I mean, if you think about it, he was a respectful dude, shit, I ain't... I mean, he never showed no sign of disrespect, you feel me? Like, he, he just did him, so it was like, shit, yeah. His death made huge waves in the rap world and especially in Chicago. Everyone truly respected him. He collaborated with artists like Kendrick Lamar. He appeared in the music video for Hold On, which is a very well-known drill track. Travis Scott, ASAP Rocky, and Playboy Carti also maintained friendships with him. XX Extentacion visited him during his last hospital stay. Even his rivals like FBG Duck said rest in peace when Fredo died. Fredo was not the biggest rapper the drill scene has ever seen, but he was one of the realest and most valued figures of the new generation. To this day, many artists say that Fredo Santana was their inspiration. 
For example, Fredo Bang. Fredo Bang actually got his name from Fredo Santana. I hope I was able to bring you a little closer to the story of Fredo today. The thing is, there aren't many interviews with Fredo. And when he did give one, he didn't really reveal much about himself. So, the research was a bit difficult. My personal favorite hit from Fredo is Bin Savage. What's yours? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. I'll see you next time. Ciao, ciao.